Welcome to another episode of It Crept from the 80s. Oh my goodness. This is a, a long time coming. Or a long time cuming, depending on how you say coming. I'm here with the most magical betrayer of all time, Clint Kelly, special guest. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it had to be coming. <laughs> Talk with me about something very special, something near and dear to our hearts, our farts, and uh, I assume our childhoods. Oh, yeah. Well, which I'm sure we will get into, which I hope we'll get into, which I want to get into. Uh, But today's episode, folks, isn't really 80s-centric, but for me, it certainly, you know, started in the 80s. Um, but this man, this, this giant among men, <laughs> a king, this luminary of, of actors is known the world over. Uh, what's he celebrating now? Geez, what's it like 55, 60 years, something like that? Yeah, uh, 54 is when the first one came out. So we're almost at, uh, 70 years oh my goodness are you kidding me yeah <laughs> jesus godzilla folks we're here to talk about godzilla uh the mighty the king of the monsters the king of the monsters yes a kaiju among kaiju <laughs> and uh yeah we just want to talk about um you know what godzilla meant to means to us uh, the joy it brings us, uh, he brings us, the movies bring us. And um, I would say that, um, you know, because of these films, because of the big G, it certainly um, has uh, fueled my love of giant monsters and, you know, giant monsters and giant robots fighting giant monsters. And Definitely. Things of that nature. Uh, you know, also for me growing up, there was Voltron, um, you know, anything, anything like that giant, giant things fighting other giant things. Yeah. It was very cool. And for uh, me, but, you know, you during my time, we had the Power Rangers, which I know you don't like, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you were, that was prime for you. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, we we have more than a decade between us, um, and that was like, you know, prime time for Clint Kelly. But yeah. I want to find out um, sort of when you first saw Godzilla, fell in love with Godzilla, you know, what sort of sparked you to this man in a rubber suit uh, behemoth? Yeah, well, I think it is because of, you know, Power Rangers came out in, like, 93. I was five years old. I was obsessed with Power Rangers. And it was, you know, Japanese, recycled Japanese footage that they used in an American show. And, you know, they're fighting these creatures in suits. So I always liked that. So I'd say maybe, like, six or seven, a year or maybe two years later, I was a, 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 you know, I almost lived at my local blockbuster. And I'd rent, and they all knew me there, and I was able to rent, like, you know, PG-13 or even some R-rated stuff without my grandmother to coming in. Because, you know, they knew my grandmother, and my grandmother gave me permission to to watch all these, you know, movies. So our science fiction section was very small. It was almost like one bay for science fiction. Hmm. And it was almost exclusively Godzilla movies. (laughs) Like, all of them. All of them that were out up until that point, it was pretty much all Godzilla. So, you know, I'm just looking at them, and the covers were cool, and it, yeah, I looked on the back, you know, just monsters fighting monsters. So I would rent a couple at a time, and I actually remember the first one that I rented was Ibra, Horrors of the Deep. And I just remember watching it. And back when I was a kid, I loved to, you know, especially watching Power Rangers, I loved to act like I was in the episode and I was fighting. So when I was watching Godzilla, 
And, you know, when Godzilla would show up and start fighting, I would then act like I was Godzilla fighting <laughs> monsters. And I just remember having like a blast watching these movies. And they were all the dub like back then they were the dubbed versions on VHS. So I loved watching that. Like to me, it was so it just like made it so <laughs> more enjoyable to see the mouths not lining up correctly. Yeah. It just as a kid, I loved it. And so that's where it all began. I remember this small little science fiction section in Blockbuster, but they had like every single one. So eventually I would just go back and I just kept renting them and renting them until I've seen them all. And then I'd rent them again. And yeah, I would just, you know, act them out. Like I was fighting, you know, all the monsters. And I love, I mean, it was just like great. And I eventually would like show them to my cousins and stuff. And I have all these younger cousins. So as I got older, I'd show them Godzilla. And just the other night, my nephew, who's seven years old, stayed the night over at my house, and he's a Godzilla nut. Yeah. And, and already he's drawing pictures of Godzilla. So I showed him my stack. You know, I pulled out my nice stack of Godzilla movies, and I showed him the first one, you know, the 1954 original. And I was like, I'm going to warn you, it's in black and white. I don't know if you're going to like it. And you know, some of like the more like human stuff he didn't like. But once I like, I was like, here, I'll, I'll, I'll get you to some good stuff. Once Godzilla showed up, he was like fired up. And it just reminded me of like that exact being like that exact age and just yeah. being pumped to see monster destruction on the screen. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, do you think there's, I mean, as a fan now, do you find there's just a, there's an element of <clears throat> nostalgia connected to it all? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, nostalgia is a big driving point in a lot of the, the old stuff that I like, you know. Um, but there's still like I admire now older and being like, you know, a filmmaker myself and seeing all that. There is like a level of <laughs> craftsmanship, you know, oh, yeah. like, that, that is amazing that, to, to watch. Um, like in my, I guess we can talk about favorites or least favorites later, but like, okay. you know, rewatching some of the stuff lately. And when you came over to my house, we watched some, you know, okay. and just like watching how they put it all together. It's just, it's cool. You know, it's just cool. It's you, I'm watching it in a different eye now. Obviously I'm not acting out fighting and everything to them, but you know, watching it now as like a filmmaker, I, it's just they're admirable movies like even some of the bad ones like it's still like oh it's cool how they did that you know and it, it's just you know cool to watch them like that now but definitely a huge nostalgia factor yeah i feel like uh, you know so, um sometimes for me uh watching the behind the scenes you know when they started putting the behind the scenes on like the dvd releases yeah uh that was very exciting for somebody like me yeah also you know a filmmaker and who loves the making of movies and projects like this and just to see it's it's so funny watching how they put something like that together and then watching it played out edited all together and everything and just how like how fun, silly, and cheesy it is watching it being put together. But then there's still something very magical when you actually see the whole thing and how they pull it off, the speeds that they shoot on to make it look like they're cumbersome lumbering beasts and shit like that. And adding the animation for like the special effects and certain things like that. That's really yeah. cool. And yeah, I just, you know, it's... Yeah, it's uh, fun. It's just a, a magic. It's it's uh, it's one thing that I really love about the Japanese in general is how they just love their weird myths and legends and and you know and kaiju is like a big deal to them and right. And, uh, it's they take it seriously. Yeah, they're they these are a lot of the movies are cheesy and goofy. If not every one is cheesy and goofy. But they do it with a heart to it. It's never taken, you know, uh, a, like a lightly sort of thing. And, and like they get upset when like one of them doesn't perform well. And, and <laughs> you know, they're like they really 
like look at these movies as you know these are something to uphold which i agree i think that they're great and i love that they do that and, and one other thing i love about the godzilla movies that i don't think it's talked about enough is like the soundtrack and the music for these movies are iconic you know oh yeah you know in the new movies specifically when you hear the callbacks to some old songs and old soundtracks and and old little music beats it like that like really like i'm sitting there in the theater when i'm watching it and i'm like oh that's awesome you know that they call back from this movie you know yeah yeah i agree um yeah mine was a little different the i came to godzilla because of um wpix in new york uh you know growing up in wellsville new york uh so the station channel 11 wpix um they would have sunday movie marathons and sometimes they were godzilla sometimes they were uh kung fu Mm -hmm. you know um and so i would watch both i would watch the old you know shaw brothers (laughs) Kung Fu, Chop Saki, you know, crazy yep. movies. And then there would be, you know, a Godzilla marathon on. Um, and so I'd watch those. Sometimes it would be, um, you know, Saturday nights at like midnight. And uh, Channel 9 would would show those, you know. Um, and that's how I sort of got into the whole godzilla thing uh just as a kid watching them on those channels at night um and (laughs) laughing yeah (laughs) at the dubbing you know um you know and i think because of watching those movies as as a young kid in the 80s um when i saw police academy 2 and i saw you know (laughs) jones do the dubbing (laughs) i I knew exactly what it was and i it it made it even funnier uh you know because i had never i wasn't privy to any other movies i'm sure there were like spaghetti westerns and stuff that were playing on these channels you know right late nights and stuff but i didn't watch those i so i saw that these japanese movies that were always dubbed you know and you know maybe i don't know i started seeing this stuff around you know 84 83 84 so i was seven yeah eight years old and i'm just like why is you know right (laughs) like why isn't it matching this is so weird but and it always made me giggle you know there's something wrong with it um and then it, you know, became sort of, I got it. I understood it uh, later on. And, and I'm sure s- certainly through watching other things or people telling me, oh, this is it's because they're speaking in a different language. And, and, you know, for American audiences, we dub it and stuff like that. All that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then it just became endearing to me. Like, to this day, uh I am not a subtitle person. I know like that's blasphemy to a lot of people who love Asian cinema um, yeah. in general. I just, I don't like it. I don't like reading my movies. Yeah. Um, it's, part, it's part of the reason why like I'll, I'll scoff at the people these days. I think you're one of them who will watch a movie or a TV show with subtitles on. And I'm just like, not for, I mean, for foreign films, I like Godzilla, I don't mind watching in subtitled for foreign movies, but for like regular movies, I don't watch the subtitles. Well, not, a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen this weird thing, right? Like even, yeah. you know, 20 year olds are doing it. I'm just like, what are you fucking deaf? Like, you know, like I don't get it. Like Bobby can't watch anything without subtitles. I'm like, it's just ruining the experience for <laughs> me. Get it off the screen. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with that for English movies. I don't watch them with, you know, my hearing's not bad, so I don't watch it. I know a lot of people do it because movies are mixed badly nowadays, you know, and but I don't, you know, I don't. But for foreign movies, I don't mind watching subtitles. Uh, and no, I guess. movies, I don't. But for, you know, if I want to watch it, I don't have a problem watching the dub stuff because that's what I grew up watching was 
the dub versions. Yeah, so, you know, and I started um, watching anime in 1993, you know, I'm 16 and Akira hits VHS, you know, and I start watching those movies and uh, Vampire Hunter D and, you know, Wicked City and all these movies and they're just dubbed. That's how we got them, you know, so I was just like, well, this is cool. This is great. This is how I want to watch this stuff. Like. You know, and to this again, to this day, if I'm watching anime, I want to watch the dubbed. I don't want to watch the, I don't want to have to read. Yeah. My movies, you know, read my television shows. But um, so dubbing is for me also a very important part of, you know, the Godzilla experience. Um, It adds to the fun of it, you know, and and really actually like probably when I was like nine, 10, 11, I would think to myself, you know, maybe one day I could be a a guy who does these voices, you know, because right. they were always so they I think you and I have talked about it before. Like anybody who's dubbing these types of movies, they're not using like a normal human being's voice. They you know, <laughs> like nobody talks like that. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. I mean, it's just so bizarre, you know. Like suddenly, everyday normal human beings become caricatures in these movies You're right. because of the voice acting, you know. And that's the same with anime too. You know, it's, it's these odd choices that these voice actors make. Yeah. Um, that really add to what's special about these films. Um, and so I love it. I appreciate it so much, and uh, I, I feel like if I were to watch it with the subtitles, it takes some of the charm away from it for me. Yeah. You know? um, but uh, yeah, you know, and I, I definitely, while, you know, you would act it out, I certainly did that with like, you know, He-Man and Star Wars and stuff like that, even uh, Dark Crystal and stuff like that. Me and my neighborhood friends would like act out those movies and shows and things like that. Um, but with Godzilla, I think for me, I I remember always wanting to uh, build like the sets and stuff yeah. to to do that. I you know I never did it, and you know I've been making movies since I was seven years old, backyard epics and shit like that, as you know. Yeah. But I never attempted to do any sort of Godzilla type thing, you know, or with a force perspective or anything like that. I mess around with force perspective in a different way, but not for like a giant monster type thing but yeah because i was also enamored with special effects and all of that stuff i i i thought man probably being the age that i was i was like how am i ever going to pull off like making buildings and you know skyscrapers and have a background like this and all that stuff and so i just never did it but i was fascinated by that you know you knew i think i, I certainly did at an early age that oh these were just models these were oh, yeah. sets um uh guys in really elaborate you know costumes you know you knew it wasn't real but oh, yeah. there was just something a lot like the harryhausen stuff you know uh stop motion i found that fascinating but i just never had the patience to try it myself you know i definitely did it here and there with like play-doh and stuff like that and i would i would make little quick animations with Play-Doh and make like a dinosaur eat something or something like that. Yeah. I did that shit. But um, yeah, I just, you know, these movies 100% helped fuel creativity and imagination for sure. And yeah. somebody like, you know, who's creatively driven, you know, and so it hit you in that way and it hit me in that way. Um, and then I think it just never, never left. What's interesting <clears throat> You talked a little bit about it, but um, so I couldn't get anybody to get into it growing up, ever. My best friends, my neighborhood friends, nobody, yeah. uh, nobody else like liked Godzilla the way I liked Godzilla. And it wasn't until like my adulthood that I found other people who were into Godzilla movies. And I would say now, you know, even at a as a forty five year old, clearly we know that there's millions of Godzilla fans out there. But in our circle, I think it's really like you, me, and Bobby, maybe, <laughs> you know? 
as far as my friends are concerned. Yeah, uh, most of it was that I showed was my family, my younger family, my cousins, you know, uh, and then now my nephew now. Um, and mostly, you know, none of the girls that I showed it to, like your <laughs> sisters, seemed to like it. But like all my boy cousins and stuff as they were growing up liked it because they would do the same thing. They, you know, let's play Godzilla or something, you know, and then we'd pretend we were a monster and I'd pick them up and slam them on the bed or something. You know, we'd make like a, a pillow fort or something. I'd just like slam them into it while making Godzilla noises. So it was like, but now that you mentioned that, you know, I don't know if... I like showed my friends too much like Godzilla. I showed a lot of my friends like horror and stuff. Yeah, me too. So the horror I definitely did. Um, and, you know, they, they were into it to a point, but I definitely was the horror kid in, in Wellsville. Um, yeah. But they went along with it. You know, I guess it was more acceptable to them than a fucking Godzilla movie. And I can, I can totally understand it. I get it. Because yeah. um, essentially... Godzilla are 50-50 movies, you know, that's like 50% just humans talking and dealing with politics of the situation. Yeah. And then the other 50% is monster smashing, and that's all really anybody cares about. Um, so, you know, I get it. Uh, you got to have a, you got to be a particular type of person, I, I assume, to enjoy the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but, so these guys didn't, you know, and I... <clears throat> When River was born, I was sort of determined to <laughs> make him a Godzilla fan. Yeah. So much like all the other stuff that I grew up with in the 80s, I pushed Godzilla onto him as well when he was really young. And thankfully, you know, it stuck. And yeah. he's, you know, even at, you know, almost 16, he's still, uh, he still says he loves Godzilla and he still wants to see every Godzilla movie and, you know. Um, he doesn't show them off anymore, but he had quite a, quite a Godzilla collection of, of toys, you know, figures and stuff. Um, and I now remember. I've taken them because yeah. he, you know, he's put them away, but, uh, yeah. 10 more years, he's going to want those back. Yeah, no. oh, for, sure. for sure. Well, the good thing is they're not going anywhere. You know, I'm going to be displaying them and he can just be like, well, I'm going to take these back. Yeah. You know, um, well, it's 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 interesting because he still displays his Transformers and his Star Wars, um, but maybe because the Godzilla stuff, there's they're so big and there's so many of them, he's just got nowhere to put them, so we just put them away. But I I you know I took them, I'm going to display them, and I have my own Godzilla as well, but. Um, you know, throughout the years, I've gotten some pretty cool. I've gotten him some pretty cool Godzilla shit. Um, I need to get. I need to get all my toys. I think I've told you this a couple times. That all my toys are back in my mom's house in Maryland, and that they're well, in a big tub. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive to your mom's, <laughs> and so I'm just going to get them. And all find my turtles, them. Godzilla, any Power Rangers, anything that I had when I was a kid. I mean, I had this gigantic. It was like a, I called it the tub, you know, yeah. but it was like where my toy chest basically, but it was this big plastic, you know, thing I kept in the middle of my room. It took up so much space. My room was so small, but I would just, it was like filled to the brim with just toys. Yeah. And Godzilla. Yeah. So I, you know, that's <clears throat> one thing. Um, that's uh, still pretty excited, exciting for me is that my son, you know, it's one thing that we can still sort of talk about and he doesn't like give me a teen attitude about, you know, yeah. it's like Godzilla, Godzilla's fucking cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Those movies. And I think for him to be able to see, you know, to grow up with like we did, you know, so we all grew up with man in suit godzilla and then we get to see the progression you know yeah and he thinks it's just as badass but he still you know he still appreciates the man in suit stuff you know? Definitely. so but um so what was the do you know the first one that you saw do you have any idea of what the first one you saw was um 
I don't. I don't because they, again, they would play like double, triple features, you know, and sometimes they would play those same movies like every other weekend or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm sure it was the same old, same old, you know, smog monster and, and that type of shit over and over again, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that there's movies that I can watch now and I can say, oh, geez, I like really remember this, you know? Yeah. And obviously, right. so those are the ones that are like, oh, shit, this was like re-ran over and over and over again, so I would watch this. And I didn't actually, because they were playing on those channels a lot, I never rented them at the video store, Video Connection, and they certainly did have them. Um, but I remember going to a Suncoast at the mall when I was a teenager and just buying my first v Godzilla VHS, you know? I can yeah. remember that stuff. Um and so I, re I definitely remember physical media wise getting VHS Godzilla, then DVD and going with the DVD Godzilla, getting rid of the DVDs and then going Blu-ray yeah. and now 4K with some of this stuff. But I mean. <clears throat> but what's funny is I never owned them on VHS. I would just, my Blockbuster had just had them. So yeah. I would just go back and always rent them. And it wasn't until, you know, DVDs started coming out. I had all of them on dvd yeah. and i recently like maybe a couple years ago or maybe a year ago i traded in i had the box set and then i had like this uh like the ones that came in a double dvd yeah yeah and i started to upgrade so i yeah. sold all the dvds and i recently just got like that a huge stack for yeah. like 50 bucks of like the double features and everything so now i think i have all of them except for the ones in the criterion set and then once i get those then i'll finally have them all again yeah i have i think i have all of them other than um i'm not a fan of shin godzilla i don't i don't like that movie i didn't like it no yeah. it, it it strayed too much for me um as far as what godzilla is and what he looks like and how yeah. he does his thing and it was just like ooh i don't <laughs> i don't like this <laughs> I, I, think I, I think i think i watch it i think i may have liked it if it was like something else and not godzilla if it was just another like giant monster movie or something yeah. but it just i don't know they took too many swings uh and for me they missed um so i don't like i don't like shin godzilla so i don't own that one um other than the newer films starting in 2014 had you seen any godzilla movies in theaters besides the newer ones i uh, want did i see 2000 i may have seen 2000 in theaters i did I'm almost, I'm almost positive i saw 2000 in theaters yeah because i remember the commercial the trailer and it had like Rob Zombie music, like playing, <laughs> it, you know. And I remember just being like, "This is wow!" And I was a Rob Zombie fan when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. And I was, man, this looks awesome. So I think I'm, I'm almost positive I saw that in the theater. But besides yeah. that, I saw 2000, and then, um, yeah, the the newer ones. Yeah. I, so yeah, I was in, um, I was in Long Island. Um, during the the Malva days, when we were mm -hmm. when we were prepping Malva Zombie Ass Kicker, and the whole bunch of us went to see Godzilla two thousand, and that was such a fun experience. Uh, yeah, you know, because it was the first time theatrically I have ever seen a Godzilla movie, and we were just it was such a fun night. It was you know everybody there was having a blast with it. And then when Godzilla Final Wars came out um, here locally at the Eastman House, they did a they did a premiere screening oh, of cool. Final Wars, and it was packed. The place was packed. 
It was yeah. amazing. Um, it's one of my least favorite Godzilla movies, but seeing it that way, you know, and that and the first time, it was a magical night. Yeah, because I think the atmosphere and, and you know uh, that montage where Godzilla just starts kicking everybody's ass, every monster's ass, all in like <laughs> succession. <laughs> including the 98 Godzilla. I think, you know, the whole crowd was just like, ah! yeah, they're freaking out now. But um, overall, I think the movie is pretty terrible. <laughs> it's not one of my favorite ones. I, I still like it. There's only really, and I, ha- I, was, I came up with a, a top three and a bottom three for this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the bottom three are like ones that I like actively avoid watching, you know? Whereas the rest, I can find stuff in them that I like. That's yeah. you know, but these the bottom three that I came up with are like, oh yeah, these are these are ones that I just really don't have an interest in watching too much of. Yeah, I mean, Final War is definitely like at the top of the shit list for me. Um, so my least favorite, which I think. I mean, it goes without saying. Is ninety eight? I hated it. Oh, I don't. I don't even count it. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's you know, I I count it as a Godzilla movie because Toho recognizes it as a Godzilla movie. I don't. I remember, but not really Godzilla. They call you know Zilla in the in the Toho universe. He's not really Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I didn't see it in theater. Something about the trailer really turned me off when it. Like, I was a kid and I saw it. I was like, this does not, this, I don't know what this is, but this is a Godzilla. And I watched it on like, I didn't even rent it on VHS. I watched it on TNT or something when it came out. And I just remember hating it. Like just never wanted to watch it again. Yeah. Um, but so, and then, at, yeah, so that was like my number one. Don't like, we'll probably never watch it again. So I will say we did see that in theaters. I completely forgot about that. And actually, it was me and my girlfriend at the time and Jesse Green yeah. of LVP fame, um, who I guess was a Godzilla fan. I, you know, I forgot about Jesse. But, um, and uh, this was, I remember I didn't want to see a lot of trailers and stuff for it. Oh, yeah. Um, because I was just like, I want to be surprised. I want the. I felt like these guys did Independence Day. This can't fail, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then we saw it, and I remember all of us just kind of looking at each other, like, "What the fuck are we watching? Like, what is this? This isn't Godzilla." Yeah. Uh, and we almost left. We almost left the theater. Um. But when so when we came out. All we did for the rest of the night was bitch about this movie. Like, yeah. I, I do remember that. Um, but yeah, it's fucking terrible, and I don't even count it, so. Yeah, and then uh, probably number two that I don't like is All Monsters Attack from 1969. It's the one where it's, like, basically flashbacks and all clips and yeah, yeah. just extremely boring. Yes. And, and then Son of Godzilla. I, I knew you were going to say Son of Godzilla. <laughs> You're not, like, Son of Godzilla. Uh, it's, Godzilla's just like a dickhead father and then it's just like <laughs> such a weird uh, like I don't get any joy really watching it really? no so yeah. I get joy out of it because it's so fucking weird you know yeah. it's just not one that I you know don't care to watch it's just I don't know I remember watching it when I was a kid and just being like there's like some puppet crab creatures right in that movie it's like one I've seen the least but there's like some there's like there was like those like cool things I remember, but then like overall, I just remember not. You don't like Godzilla trying to teach him to <laughs> yeah. blow fire. <laughs> he comes right. out in like, like little rings, little yeah. smoke rings. So those are those are my, and I don't the uh, the second Godzilla movie I don't like that much. Godzilla raids again. You know, so and I think this stems from. Um, seeing the Godzilla films that I saw first and then seeing the original Godzilla. 
and I think I was like really disappointed, um, you know, because I was like, "Ooh, this no, these other ones are way funner, you know, way more yeah. fun." You know, that first one is obviously means a lot uh, to the Japanese people and and what the metaphor is and allegory and all of that stuff, and I get that, but those first two Godzilla movies, yeah. I, I like the first one. I like the Japanese cut of the first one. King of the I, Monsters, the American redub, yeah. little is a little painful to sit through. It's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's just the I really didn't start liking like the '60s stuff. Is like when I was like, oh yeah, this is this is kind of some of the stuff that I'm really getting yeah, into. For sure. Yeah. Um, and you know, my favorite Godzilla is 70s Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, mine is uh, my favorite movie is from is a 90s Godzilla movie. Okay, but, so yeah, I'm just saying, like, my the look, oh, I, the looks. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the look of Godzilla starting in like 74, you know, yeah, 73, yeah. 74. It's that weird, like, kind of puppety looking yeah you know where he's <laughs> he's just so kind of fun and lovable looking and he's jumping and <laughs> he's goofy a little bit um i like that godzilla but uh yeah so this set um which i have taken the the discs out because i do have a a fun set that you can get um, that will fit uh, on a shelf. What's that? That will fit on a shelf. You have yeah, to. that'll fit on a shelf. Yeah, I just put this in with books now because uh, the artwork is still awesome. There's a lot of artwork, and it goes into you know detail of of all the movies. Yeah, you know. Um. So I'm definitely never going to get rid of it. Um, but this is a great set. Uh, the the movies look gorgeous, and this is something that you know I think when I was over to your place the last time when we talked about, but like, and I even found it with the DVD releases. But they always took really good care with presenting these films, you know, yeah. and they're you know shot. 235 Toho scope, <laughs> you know, um, Cinescope, but, um, and these are no exception. I mean, these, these, this Criterion release is just like insane. They really, they did a great job at presenting these. Um, but this set has 15 of the films, Godzilla, 1954. This this is considered the Showa era. Yeah. Um, and this has some of the most iconic um, and some of the best as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so it's got Godzilla, Godzilla Raids Again, King Kong versus Godzilla, which that's another one that they would show all the time on WPIX. Yeah. And I loved it. I just thought it was so fun. Yeah, I love uh, it too. Mathura, yeah. Mathura. <laughs> Mathura versus Godzilla. Ghidra, the three headed monster. Invasion of Astro Monster. That's what we watched, right? When you came over. Yeah, yeah. We, I think we watched another one too. We did. We watched uh, Mecha Godzilla. Right, yeah. Uh, Yes, Ibera Horror of the Deep, which we, which has been, uh, which played a lot as well. Um, different names, always, all over the place. There's different names for a lot of these movies. Yeah. Um, Versus the Sea Monster is what that one's been called before. And of course, Clint's favorite, Son of Godzilla. Uh, Destroy All Monsters, which I think is fun. I yeah, think it's good movie. Fun. Um, I think I brought down a party at one time. Were you there? Um, it was during a gash bash, and I put, I put destroy all monsters on, and like 
I think I was the only one having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I have been there because I would have been sitting there watching it. Yeah, I think everyone else was like, eh. Eh. Um, All Monsters Attack, which is gibberish. It's goofy. Which, which is funny because it's sandwiched in between two of my favorite Godzilla movies. Godzilla, Godzilla versus Hidora. I love Hidora. it. Godzilla versus Gigan. Gigan is one of my favorite villains. Yeah. Godzilla versus Megalon, which is one of the funniest Godzilla films, as far as I'm concerned. I've seen both the, you know, original version, and I've seen the Mystery Science Theater version. Yeah. Which is also hilarious. Um, but, you know, they give us Jet Jaguar in, yeah. in this film. <laughs> Uh, another one of the best villains is Mecha Godzilla. So we got Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, and then the terror of Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Um, two back to backs that are pretty fucking great. Um, but I mean, these have you know tons of special features and interviews and just like you know retrospectives and all that stuff. And these are the these are the films in the cases that I got online. Um, yeah. It's a pretty great set. Uh, I mean, they look great. Whoever put that together was did a fantastic job. Um, and this was just so that you could put your films on the shelf with your other films, collections, what have you. Yeah. And it's awesome. And I appreciate who made these, the guy who made these. I wish I could remember, but he did a fantastic job. Um, and they're all there. And then, so, okay, so I guess this is another one I don't have, um, which is Godzilla 84. Um, I don't have that one. I do. Yeah, I have 84. Do you? Now, what, was there a company that put that out? Kraken. Okay. All right. I I think I just... I don't like it as much as uh, some of the others. Yeah, it's... Um, it's okay. I mean, it got Godzilla back into... You know, people started talking about Godzilla again. And it wouldn't be it until what, five years later. We got one of my favorites. Me too. You know? Yeah, that's so. Uh, my top three. I'll talk about my top three favorite Godzilla movies. So number three is that is Godzilla versus Biollante. I love this movie. It's great. Uh, as a kid, and being a horror fan, and being a fan of like weird, <laughs> you know, things like evolving and like just like body horror almost. It's like the closest you get to like a just straight up horror. It's there's great sci-fi elements in it too, but yeah. watching Biolanti just evolve and get like nastier and grosser, I loved it. I loved it. Well, that was like a you know that was a really a return to form. Yeah, you know for Toho, uh, you know especially compared to '84, you know. And where... it was crazy they held like a contest to see like come up with an idea for a Godzilla movie. And I think a kid was just like, this is my idea. And they were like, we <laughs> like it. Um, yeah. And so then we, we dip into the mysticism and magic of the, uh, oh shit. Jim Van Brunt. Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla. Damn thing. Uh, then we get into these beautiful, these double feature collections. Yeah. We got Godzilla versus Ghidorah. Yep, that was the Godzilla next one. That was, and uh, Matura, the battle for Earth. Yeah. So this is, these were the next movies in the line. Um, and this is really, you know, 
as far as like suit and puppetry and stuff like that, Biollante was like a start of a whole new generation. Yeah. And then with these movies, you really start, they start like <clears throat> using, using more, you know, computer effects and, and, uh, uh, advanced like animatronics and puppetry and shit like that for a lot of the stuff um and it was exciting to see you know it was like ooh, this is you know <laughs> this is 90s godzilla <laughs> um then we got godzilla versus mecha godzilla 2 and one of my favorites godzilla versus space godzilla i love space godzilla 2 i think it's pretty phenomenal yeah. Um, it's the only Godzilla movie I've ever watched with my wife. Oh, yeah. Space Godzilla. And I was like, hey, I just want to show you this movie. <laughs> I think I completely turned her off from any Godzilla movies ever because she never oh. wants to watch any with me. But <clears throat> That's a shame, my friend. <laughs> that, was the, that was the only one I've showed her. Um, and then we got um, Godzilla versus Destroya. So, which I really like. That is my absolute favorite Godzilla movie. Yeah, yeah. I love. It. And then Godzilla versus Mega Gyrus. I like that um, movie too. Yeah, I do too, but but Destroya knocks it out yeah. of the park. No, Destroya is is everything that I love in a Godzilla movie. And then my number two, I didn't say what my number two was, is, is Hedera. Because it's so, it's like a trippy 60, you know. Yeah, I think it came out in 71, but it's like a psychedelic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that beginning alone is like, what the hell? It's like a James Bond movie, <laughs> you know? It's so, um, like, weird, and it's just, like, right up my alley. But Destroya, when it came out, you know, I remember they had it in Blockbuster in 1995. And then I was just like, this is... I love the way Godzilla looks in it. 2000, I like. Godzilla 2000. Um, I love his look in this movie. Yeah. Um, and I love the villain. Oh, I love... Yeah. Yeah, I think that the whole UFO thing and how it transforms and all that stuff is pretty cool. Um, Wonder if Jordan Peele kind of is a fan of Godzilla 2000. I didn't see, nope, I didn't see Oh, nope. crap. Oh, I thought you said you saw it. No, I mean, I know there's aliens and stuff in it, but I... Okay, I, well then, yeah. All right, I won't say anything. Um, so... This one, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack. Yeah. I love. Yeah. This one, this one. Yep. I think it's, I think it's great. Um, and then another Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. <laughs> uh, you know, which they do quite a bit. Because Mechagodzilla, I mean, he's, you know, come on. He's a good he's, villain. He's probably the, the best Godzilla villain. Um. And his look just keeps getting better and better. I but agree. Um, so, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. This is when they basically, uh, you know, how Godzilla sort of goes back and forth to being a good guy and a bad guy. Yeah. Um, Godzilla's a stone cold mother in in this film. You know, he's got the like the zombie eyes in it. <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, the monster melee stuff is great in that movie. Um, so it's good shit. Now, and then these two. So I, I think these are on my... <clears throat> yeah, they're both kind of stoinkers for me, but... Tokyo, SOS, and Final Wars. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I've definitely watched Final Wars more than I've watched Tokyo, SOS. I think I like Tokyo, SOS a tad more. Than I like Final Wars, but still, like these two would definitely not be titles that I would pull for a marathon. Yeah. You know, um, that's for sure.
And then we go into 2014 in the yeah. anticipation for Godzilla. His Solid cut, opening night. His return. Me too. Yeah. Uh, very excited. I know lots of people don't like the movie. Um, Get on the 4K if you don't like the movie. That's my suggestion. Because I, I said watch it again. If you don't like the movie, watch it again on the 4K release. You know? Because this looks amazing on the 4K. Yeah, I know. But I, I think, I think um, what we were getting when these movies were coming out, the new stuff, was I think that <clears throat> people say they're Godzilla fans and they like Godzilla or maybe they like the idea of Godzilla and maybe seeing clips here and there when they were young. But if if you were a Godzilla fan, you knew what you were getting into. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I think the whole, uh, there's more humans than Godzilla. I mean, watch a Godzilla movie. <laughs> you know? like, uh, and I know that's such a cliche answer, but it's the truth. Like, there's always more people than there is Godzilla stuff. You yeah. know, it's just how it is. And to me, there wasn't anything different about it. Um, yeah. Well, I think I, we've talked about what the issues with this and probably Godzilla King of the Monsters is, is that they, it's so dark. You know, absolutely. They, like they um, don't show Godzilla fighting in the daytime. They don't show it's he's in the rain. You know, and yeah, it's, it's just really dark. You know, and and it was like that. You know, with uh, Pacific Rim, which I think is a tremendous film. Um, yeah, I love it so much that movie. But again, I, um. <clears throat> You know, I think it's a visual effects trick. They, you know, um, I think it can maybe bring down costs, uh, whatever, the rendering time or whatever it is. Uh, you hide a lot of the stuff in the dark, in the rain. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely one thing that I didn't appreciate. But what I loved about the first Godzilla, the 2014 one, was just how... Um, serious they they took it like yeah this was a force of nature that they had no plan for they did not know how to deal with this thing and you know gareth edwards made him feel immense uh huge heavy you know like right like this was a disaster movie like what the fuck are we gonna do <laughs> you know like I love that aspect of it. Um, I love the the sound design of the film. They just, you know, and I love how like before Godzilla would roar, like the sound would just like whip yeah. out of like all the speakers and then <laughs> and then hit you. And it was almost uh, jarring. It was like kind of scary, you know, to hear such a beast roar yeah. like that and that stuff was oh it's giving me goosebumps now but yeah it's very cool i love the scale of it and uh you know this was the biggest we had ever seen godzilla you know what i mean it was it was very cool um so i really appreciate it again you know you're you know you're gonna get people drama and shit like that um but i thought they handled it uh pretty well you know <clears throat> Um, and then came Kong Skull Island. Yeah. Uh, and I this, you know, this movie is probably tops as far as the new MonsterVerse goes. Um, I would say Godzilla versus Kong is like right up there as well. But this one, um, for me, they, they like, they got it right as far as. I agree. The mixing of the mystical, the magical, the the craziness of the situation, but we got to see it in broad daylight. We got to see these behemoths, like you know, be who they are, like in broad daylight, and it looked awesome. 
and the and Kong was the fights were great and yeah, the act was incredible the cinematography like it, yeah gorgeous I think um yeah they really they got it right with Skull Island um yeah and it's it is beautiful it's beautiful to watch um and I've probably out of the new MonsterVerse movies I've probably watched Skull Island more than any of them yeah I agree I have too um then came King of the Monsters. I actually watched that for the first time at your house. Uh, so this is Michael Doherty, who did um, Trick or Treat and Krampus. And so there's some things that he gets very right with this movie. And then some things that are just, well, right back in the in the issues that were there with the first, the, the 2014 movie. Um, too dark, uh, lots of rain. Um, you know, the people stuff. I think uh, <clears throat> one of the goofy tricks that Gareth Edwards did in the first one was, you know, uh, try to hide some of the action until he wanted like a payoff. So he wanted, I guess, everyone to feel like, uh, you're just about to see something happen and then he would cut away or something like that. Yeah. But he, cause he wanted that like anticipation. Um, but I think it was, it was handled a little rough and he does, and Michael Doherty does that a few times in this movie as well, which kind of sucked. Um, the designs are great. The designs oh, yes. of all the monsters were awesome. Um, Ghidorah looks badass and huge, and a really a formidable, formidable villain for Godzilla in, these, in this film. Um, I think. What I love the best about this Godzilla movie was the introduction of uh, Bear McCreary doing the music because yes. he brought in Godzilla music. And right. that was not in the 2014 movie. And it just added so much to the film. It added the nostalgia factor. It really made it feel more like, holy shit, this is a Godzilla movie. It had all the themes. He yeah. and even had the Mothra theme. His yeah. Mothra was introduced. It had the twins, but in a very like real world kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> he did give us the twins. Um, and so that stuff I I really love about this film. Uh, I also love that uh, you know, they went for it and they put the blue oyster cult song at the end of the movie. <laughs> With that montage uh, of the the scenes and everything, and the, and the the Godzilla roars throughout, I was like, yeah. "This is you know clearly Michael Doherty was a fan of Godzilla," um, yeah. and I think so. That stuff they got really right, but it's still you know it. <clears throat> uh, I enjoy it, and obviously I wouldn't own it if I didn't enjoy it in some way, because um, I don't, you know. I don't own stuff that I don't like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I have to like it in some way. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, what do you think of King of the Monsters? I, I loved it. Yeah, I, okay. and a lot of people have, you know, they say, well, I've heard people say it's the weakest out of the, I guess, if you're including Kong, it's the weakest out of the new quadrilogy of Monsterverse movies. I like it better than Godzilla 2014. I don't like it better than Kong. And I certainly don't like it better than Godzilla versus Kong. Um, but yeah. I really like it. When Yeah, I've seen it a couple times now, but I remember watching it at your house in your basement on the, uh, you know, the big screen, big pullout screen, and just being like, this is awesome. You know, this is what I, this is what I wanted more of from that first 2014 movie you know yeah. and your the music plays such a huge part in like 
making it feel more Godzilla, you know? Oh, definitely. And, and so that's why I appreciated it. But this this next one we're going to talk about is like, <laughs> I think they did it. They, they did it. it was mad as they did it. Yes. Godzilla versus Kong. Um, you know, another kick-ass filmmaker in Adam Wingard, at least for me, because he because he made the guest and uh, I love the guest. Um, and once again, uh, you know, Adam Wingard is clearly a fan of Godzilla films. Um, and this was just this was the perfect storm of everything. Again, you know, people the I was reading a lot of like, oh, it's just so goofy and far fetched and and I'm like, again, yeah. I mean, one, you're watching a movie about giant creatures <laughs> each other right. And two, clearly, clearly, you have never seen Godzilla films because yeah. they're all fucking weird and far fetched, right. You know, well the inner earth uh, you know what this is you can't go into what that doesn't make any sense and all this science fictiony stuff and spaceships and <laughs> like, yeah. all right well you know you need to be sat down and educated on the lore of godzilla right. um i loved it i was just like this is this is all of it like mashed together you know all they yeah. needed was a fucking like a bunch of alien kung fu people to come <laughs> right you know start some shit because they're controlling monsters and stuff like yeah. but uh, i mean everything else was awesome the the choreography of the monsters the effects bringing in mecha godzilla like the fights during the daytime where you can yes, see yes thing the you know boat fights on boats in the middle of water but it's but even in the 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 night scenes, the the fucking what was it? Um, when they're in the, is it Hong Kong? Yeah. I mean, but it's all neon lit. You know? Yeah, it was so it was so lit up. Yeah, and it looked awesome, and it added to the visual fun of the movie, and you could clearly see what was happening with every monster, adding the little personalities to each monster, which they didn't really do in the others. Yeah. You know, but having, you know, those personalities between the two of them was awesome. And seeing Godzilla mm -hmm. smile and, like, do some of his stuff that he did in the original, like, Showa films and stuff like yeah. that. Like, I don't know. I, I thought it was great. You know? Yeah. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I couldn't, I watched it again. You know, like, I watched it the day it came out. Watched it again the next day. Yeah, um, we went to, yeah, River and I went to the IMAX. This was the first movie we went back to during the pandemic. Yeah. Because uh, we were just like, fuck it. And, you know, we wore our masks and it, everything felt safe. And it was awesome to see it, you know, that to come back to theaters. And we were just like laughing and having a great time, clapping. It was great. And then I showed Katie on HBO Max like the next day or whatever. But yeah, it's. You and know, it was I, the first like blockbuster hit since the pandemic started i mean yeah. people loved it it made a ton of money and that's why they're gonna make up they're making a sequel they're making a tv show you know yeah man they're shooting the like sequel right made... now yep they're shooting it and, and i'm glad that adam wingard's coming back because i think you know i love him and even probably some of the movies that you don't like from him i do like you know like his yeah. weird indie horror movies he made before he started making bigger budgeted stuff and I know I'm someone's gonna kill me over this. I liked Death Notice or uh, uh, Death Note. Death Note. I liked Death Note. I never watched the anime, so I mean that's what you. That's why I had no nothing to base it off of. But I thought the movie was cool. I used to talk to him. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I used to talk to him on YouTube back when you could message people on YouTube. I uh, bought homesick his first movie he ever made and i did a review i used to do youtube channel reviews and he messaged me and he was like hey i don't really like this movie either but this new movie that i made i think you'll really like because i like it so he sent me his new movie this movie he made called pop skull in the mail and i did like it and so we started talking about making movies and stuff and then he blew up 
I'm starting yeah. making actual. You know, he blew up with. Uh, you're next. Yeah, you're next, and then after that, he just every movie was like bigger, bigger until now. He's making Godzilla movies, you know. Yeah. So good for he's a fan. Cats. Yeah. He's making Thundercats, man. <laughs> Based on two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So good for him. He's a he's a true fan, and it showed in this movie. And I, I'm, gl- I'm glad he's coming back for part two. Yeah, I, I we're in good hands, I think. Yeah, you know, um, I'm excited for it. And this show, I mean, the show that the fact that they're like doubling down and doing a MonsterVerse show is also is just like, give me more, you know, yeah. give me more. It's like, um, it's like since we got the stuff it's like we never knew we needed it you know what i mean <laughs> like it was like we love this stuff so much that i just want more it's like the the pacific rim is leaving a a hole in my heart of kaiju magic yeah. but i will say you know what i loved about the second pacific rim was daytime they they it was almost like you know Stephen denight heard all the the cries and moans about dark and rainy yeah cgi and was like okay well we're just gonna do everything in the brightest of day (laughs) you know like yeah and uh it was awesome i you know i loved it um and then the cartoon did you watch the anime uh, the um, the three anime movies that came out for Not the, I didn't like the Godzilla, but the um, uh, the Pacific Rim. I didn't watch that, but yeah, I didn't like the Godzilla. I, well, so so I ended up watching like twenty minutes of one of the Godzillas, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't like this." Um, yeah. But the Pacific Rim animated show is fantastic. Yeah, it, I didn't watch it. It really is. It's great. Great storytelling, great action. Uh, they further the myth of the kaijus yeah. and what they can do and everything. Oh, you should give it a shot. Because it, yeah. like, uh, it was like, man, why? this is great, but I want them to do this in movie, you know, live action as well. Yeah. Not to shit on the anime animation of it, because it was fantastic, but, you know, I just want... I want more. I want to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, uh, you know, hey, Legendary has given us uh, 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 more more movies and, and TV. So that's that's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was it. That's, uh, yeah. that's our that's Godzilla. I covered, I covered my top three, my bottom three, the first one I ever saw. I'm excited for more. See, you know, you... I equate this like monster verse stuff and I certainly enjoy watching the Marvel movies, you know, but this to me is like my like MCU, you know, <laughs> like I enjoy Godzilla way. I, I never read Marvel comics that much when I was a kid, you know, but I certainly grew up watching the Godzillas and stuff. So to me that they're really expanding upon it. We're going to get some new stuff. They're going all in, it seems like. It's like, oh, this is this has the potential to be, you know, MCU style big, you know, and hopefully get new fans. Like I said, my seven-year-old nephew is now a Godzilla fan, which probably wouldn't have been the case if it wasn't for them, you know, legendary, bringing them back yeah. for more people to see. So it's it's great. I hope more people discover it and then in turn watch the old movies now and then, you know, find the charm that I found and you found when we were kids of like, oh, you know, these are cool in a completely different way than what the new movies are. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. (laughs) The king. The king of the monsters. He is. He is the king of the monsters. Rightfully so. Long may he reign. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, do you like Godzilla? Let us know in the comments. What are your favorite Godzilla films? When did you yeah. start watching Gojira? Gojira. 
Tell us. In the comments. Oh, <laughs> He's coming. We must hide. <laughs> <He'll make laughs> Godzilla! It's Godzilla! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And, yes, uh, you. you know, look forward to uh, more uh, episodes from A Crip from the 80s. We got some more coming up soon, actually. Very soon. We got some stuff with Bobby Heckman, Sean King. Oh. We got oh. Nichol. Uh, yeah, some some episodes coming up. It's gonna be sweaty. All right, so what thank you. Boop? Who? Meat boop. Meat boop. Oh, I don't know if we can get meat boop. He's a you know he he got all big. He got all like Sean C. Phillips on us and doesn't yeah. doesn't talk to us because he's a big movie star now, Mr. Meat Boop. Yeah, he's in dope. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear I hear he is. <laughs> all right. So thanks, Clint, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll get sweaty next time. All right. All right. Bye. See you.